got a phase diagram, okay? So you can actually put this in a nice little neat nifty phase diagram that uh, takes pressure and temperature into consideration uh, and organizes our uh, three different phases into all areas. <clears throat> here I have the solid, here I have the gas, here I have the liquid. Okay, um, And so for example, let's say I'm looking at a uh, pressure, let's say it's water, it isn't, but let's say it's water, and this pressure here corresponds to one ATM, this entire uh, horizontal line is one ATM, okay? Um, this to me means that my temperature here is below 25 degrees Celsius because it's ice, and maybe some over here is 25 degrees Celsius, maybe here, and as I'm heating it up, I'm going to the right, and I'm going to eventually become a gas. So the red here is probably 100 degrees Celsius, and the blue here is 0 degrees Celsius, if this is 1 atm, okay? Um, and you can do this for any pressure and any, uh, any temperature. Uh, and it's just nice and organized this way. Uh, and every substance has its own phase diagram. Uh, and they don't all look the same. Uh, some of them have very small liquid regions, uh, some of them shift up, some of them shift down, uh, etc. Uh, and you can you can really look up uh, the phase diagram for most substances uh, that you can think of. You can just Google it and find it. The uh, elements behind it are going to be the same. So the transition between a solid and liquid is melting and freezing the other way. Uh, it vaporizes if it goes from a liquid to a gas and it condenses the other way. Um, Here's another thing that you may not realize, a solid can actually go into a gas and a gas can go back to a solid without ever hitting a liquid. That happens uh, under, low, uh, under, under low pressures uh, where the liquid doesn't exist. So carbon dioxide, for example, is uh, uh, dry ice, uh, is a good example for this. For carbon dioxide, say one atmosphere would be somewhere over here. And as I'm increasing the temperature for carbon dioxide, I'll go from solid directly to gas. It will sublime. And the other way, it will deposit. Okay? Um, and uh, that's just the other sort of transition you might have. Okay, some, some things don't appear as liquids under regular pressure. And you have to really pressurize them to see liquid carbon dioxide. Um, a lot of other things like that um, are around, like uh, liquid oxygen. You have to really pressurize it to get to liquid oxygen. It's not gonna. You can't just um, uh, condense oxygen. Um, it, it takes it takes a lot of uh, panache to do that. <clears throat> uh, two other things you should be aware of on the pier on the uh, phase diagram is the triple point um, and the critical point. So each one of these lines correspond to a place where two phases coexist. So at zero degrees Celsius and one atm. Uh, ice and water coexist. If I, if I put a cup of ice uh, and water together and I kept it at zero degrees Celsius, the ice won't appear to melt, the water won't appear to freeze. They will be there uh, like that in that state. They will not change. Uh, molecularly, they are constantly freezing and unfreezing, freezing and unfreezing, but to, to the naked eye, it looks like no, there's no change. Uh, and it's called an equilibrium, phase equilibrium. And there's a phase equilibrium here in the blue between the solid and the liquid. Here there's a phase equilibrium between the gas and the liquid. Okay? And this happens, let's say, you were to boil water and keep the gas from leaving uh, and, and keep the whole thing at 100 degrees Celsius. The gas and the liquid will stay, uh, they will appear to not change in mass. Okay? The triple point is this weird place where it's just one pressure and one temperature. All three phases can coexist. That's it. That's the definition of a triple point. It's just a, a funny little area of the phase diagram. Uh, and it's kind of cool. You can go on YouTube and find it. It's very cool looking to see. Uh, just go to YouTube and type in triple point uh, demonstration. And people have done it. And it's, it's neat. The critical point <clears throat> is another place here uh, where here I don't have a liquid nor do I have a gas. I have this weird thing called supercritical fluid. So beyond this pressure and temperature, the liquid and the gas kind of like meld together and they look like one thing. Okay. All right. <clears throat> uh, a little focus on vapor pressure. I want you to think of the vapor pressure here. We know that the point at which I'm going to boil, we call it the boiling point. 
as the temperature at which it boils. Think of the pressure, boiling pressure, as the vapor pressure. That's all that means. So you may see people use that term and you'd be confused by it. All that it means is that the pressure at which something boils uh, is known as the vapor pressure. See, just boiling pressure. That's all it is. We can calculate vapor pressure at different temperatures. We can also calculate different boiling points at different pressures using the clausius clapeyron equation. Okay, um, and I think uh, looking at an example will really uh, hammer this home much better than me just discussing this equation. So let's look here. I have um, water, and I know that water boils at 100 degrees Celsius, uh, which is 373K, at 1 ATM. Uh, you know, like, no dirt, right? You knew that. Okay. Uh, I want you to find the boiling point, the boiling temperature uh, of water when the pressure is increased to 2 atm okay um, take the vaporization for water to be 40770 joules per mole and when using the clausius clapeyron equation you should probably use this r okay Let's look at the clausius clapeyron equation. It looks like this. Okay, so what does this mean? If point one is what I gave you, Okay, I have 1 atm and 100 degrees Celsius. I want to know point 2. Point 2 is at temperature uh, pressure of 2 atm. I want to know this one. What's this temperature? <clears throat> so when I increase the, the pressure on water to 2 atm, which is totally something you might do, what should happen to the temperature at the boiling point for water? Okay, um, and I give you everything that you need to plug into the equation. Uh, you can just go to Google and write the heat of, vapor, heat of vaporization for water and you can find it. So let's just plug it all in and find out. And all, we're going to solve for this. Okay, so it's going to be ln of 2 atm divided by 1 atm equals to negative 40770 joules per mole divided by 8.314 joule per mole Kelvin okay uh, 1 over T2 is what we're looking for and 1 over T1 that's 373k okay so now we just have to solve, you have one equation, one unknown, you got to solve for T2. That's what we want. How do we do that? Okay, so I'll, I'll plug this into the calculator. I'll do, I'll do it slowly with you. This here becomes 0 0.693147. <clears throat> this is negative 4903.77676. This is 1 over T2. Uh, and this is, we'll keep as 1 over 373 for now. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this, by both sides, by this thing. So I only have this parenthesis on the right side. Um, this is a 6. So <clears throat> I get negative 0.00014. One three four nine six six one is equal to one over t two minus one over three hundred and seventy three. Okay. Now I have to add this to both sides. Okay. 
Okay, and I get 0 0.0025. 3961548 is equal to 1 over T2, and I have to invert this whole thing, and I find that T2 is uh, 393.76 Kelvin, which is about 120 degrees Celsius. So, again, going back to my original question, water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at 1 ATM. At what temperature does it boil at 2 ATM? The answer is 120 degrees Celsius.